you to clap. I need you to praise. I need you to click those hearts. I need you to tell the Lord you love him. Come on, I need you to tell the Lord you love him. Come on, from the bottom of your heart. Hey, from the depths of your soul. From the bottom of your heart. And the depths of your soul. Tell him I love you. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah.
times but yet and still this is the time God has designated for these things to happen so if God is still upon the throne and we know that he is amen then we must adjust with all sobriety and place a premium upon the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord is sacred the word of the Lord is sacred and if you uh, feel what I'm trying to communicate to you just give me a thumbs up in the comment box that this is still worship this is still church. This is still a special day. This is still the day of the week that we crave. We love church. Praise God. We love ministry. We love the word of the Lord. But sometimes mentally, amen, it can bother you that you're not in a physical church. But this is our reality. This is our virtual church. And we must gather our spirit and say, look, I still need a word from the Lord. Amen. That being said, let's go to uh, Daniel, the second chapter. And the 19th verse, praise God, Daniel 2 and 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me and now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. We're just going to read those uh, five verses right now. And we want you to circle, highlight, or make a note by verse 21 and 22. 21, and he changeth the times and the season. God has changed the times in which we are living in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we thank you right now for the interest of your spirit. We praise you. I feel your presence and I want to honor you. Glory to God. And we thank you for the communication of your word, God, the eternal edict of God. And we thank you for the oracle of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're thanking God for the times that we are in because the scripture says, and he changeth the times and the seasons. Amen. So if God is in control and we know that he is, he has absolutely authority, has absolute authority to change things when he sees fit or appropriate for them to be changed. So he changed the times and the seasons, not a clock. We're not talking about a literal clock, but when it says times, amen, praise God, we are in a pandemic. Now everything has changed. This is a seismic change. Now this is a global shift, praise God. It's just not happening in Chicago or America or in your house. There's something larger and bigger that is going on. Glory to God. And God's almighty hand has changed how we live during this time. These times have never been seen before on this level. So if the time has changed, beloved, and the seasons have changed, purposes must change. The way we approach life must change. Amen. So now we have the glory to God. Use this opportunity to prepare ourselves for something greater. Amen. Let's not waste the time. Let's prepare ourselves because there is something great around the corner. Amen. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night. But something better is coming when the times change. Glory to God. So the times are changing and there is great favor about to be poured out on the people of God. 
Hallelujah. I want to take my time today to communicate to you that you are in the best position in the kingdom. Amen. You are in a position of preparation for the next move of God. Glory to God. And God has impressed upon my heart for us to prepare ourselves so that we will not miss the next great revival, the next great outpour, and the next great move of favor that is coming to the people of God. My Sandaboko. Glory to God. He is setting you up for favor. Amen. If your hands are free, politely type that in the comments box. Praise God. He is setting me up for favor. Amen. And God must use affliction and trouble and trials to gather ourselves. Amen. It's just the introduction to the blessing. The affliction is just an introduction to the blessings of God. Amen. For I reckon that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So, so God says, I must reveal something inwardly first and then give you an opportunity to manifest what I place within you. Amen. For the whole creation is now groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But it starts off with suffering. And it starts off with us shutting in and shutting down and preparing ourselves and getting reacquainted with the Lord on a personal and individual level. Amen. Through seeking, fasting, praying, and studying, we are getting reacquainted with our Savior. Now, when the trial is over, when the storm is over, like Noah, amen, when you come out of the ark, it's going to be a different season. It's going to be a different time, and it's going to be a new beginning for you. Praise the Lord. So I know some of y'all asking, why, why, why? Because God says, I want to accelerate my kingdom. Glory to God. I want to accelerate my expansion. Glory to God. I want to accelerate my favor upon your life. And now this is the only way where I can accelerate the agenda that I have for your life. Jeremiah said it like this. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Glory to God. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. God is saying that the enemy will not win in this. Hear my voice now. God is saying that the enemy shall not win in this. You will not be overcome with grief and sorrow if you prepare yourself for the next great move. And if you believe that, begin to celebrate your future right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. So highlight verses 21, glory to God, and 22. It says, he changes the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Underline that. He removed kings and then he set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, knowledge unto them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, glory, and light dwelleth with him. People of God, this is the best season for the church. Amen. I know it. I know it sounds crazy. I know it don't look like it, but the church is in the birthing position. You're in the birthing position for something great. You are in the birthing position for something that you have never seen before. Eyes have not seen, neither ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. Ha! Huh. Glory to God. You're in the birthing position. You, my, my friends, are in the birthing position. And if you believe that, give God praise right where you are. All right. So now let's dig a little deeper. Let's go a little further. Amen. Meditating on scriptures and uh, spending time with God. He wants me to communicate this thought to you. Amen. He wants me to communicate this thought to you. Amen. We struggle with our confidence. 
Amen. We struggle with our confidence. Now, this is going for everybody out there that's listening to my voice, especially those who have left the Lord. Amen. There is a clarion call for you to get back in your position because the next move of favor, God wants to include you into that move. And God is a God of strategy. He is very strategic in everything that he does. Now he has leveled the playing field because some of us think, well, I have messed up too much and I can't get back to God. I have done the grossest sin and performed acts, praise God, that I am ashamed to think of, let alone bring it to God. So guess what God has done for us? He's leveled the playing field. Now everybody has to start from the same place, either their living room, their bedrooms, their kitchen, wherever. And God says, I'll, although you was all the way out of the wheel, I have constructed this time to get you back to me. Glory to God. Because the most important thing is not how much you messed up. When he, when he caught the woman in the very act of adultery, that is prophetic for all of us to see that no matter how gross our sin is, and no matter the time that we commit it, we can be in the very act of it. But when they brought her to Jesus, it changed her time. Ah, my God. It changed her from being this type of woman to another type of woman. Why? Because God, Jesus, inside of the spirit of God, amen, switched her from this woman to that woman, changing her very life because of the proximity of her being to Christ. My God. Whoa. So now I've, I've leveled the playing field. Now, even if you are not in the will of God, you have an opportunity. You don't even have to be in church and be embarrassed coming up to the front and crying. You can do that right now in the solitude of your bedroom, in the solitude of your living room, and you know you're not quite where you want to be in God. Now is the season and the time where everything can change. God said, I know what I'm doing. Amen. I want every backslider back. I want backsliders back. I want sinners to know who Jesus is. And I want the church to realize that I have strategically placed them in a position to bring me glory. Amen. So the thought for today is God has chosen you for such a time as this. God has strategically chosen you to come into the kingdom for such a time as this. God is strategic. Amen. Follow me through the scriptures, please. Let's go to Isaiah, the ninth chapter of Isaiah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll get back to Daniel in a minute. Isaiah 9 and 2. Let me show you something in scripture. Amen. It says this. Amen. That the people... Now watch these words. I want you to underline these words. Praise God and highlight these words. 9 and 2 of Isaiah says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. That they dwell in the land, they that dwell in the, the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. One more time. The people that walked, underline that word walked. People that walked in darkness have seen a great light walking in darkness is not God's plan for us walking in darkness is not God's plan for us praise God the absence of light will give darkness the ability to rule the absence of light causes darkness to have dominion so what do we need right now in this era that we're in we need light Praise God. And light represents the word of God. It represents Jesus. It represents a revelation or an understanding of God's word. Wherever you are, that's what light means to you. Praise God. For the sinner, Jesus is the light. For the backslider, Jesus is the light. For, that, for those who are already saved, you already have the light, but you need the light to be illuminated. You need more understanding of what you already got. 
Nevertheless, we all need light. Glory to God. I feel like praising God. Why? Because the light has shined in your darkness. God is saying this is the last day that you live in misery. This is the last day that you struggle with depression, with mental problems, with sadness, praise God, with fits of grief. Y'all ain't saying nothing, praise the Lord. God is saying, I am come, amen, to bring light into your situation, to let you know that this is not the place that I want you to be. Crying on the side of your bed, praise God. Walking the floor at night, uh, pulling your hair out, going through situations in your mind that might not even be true. But God says, I know where you are and I have sent Jesus strategically to a place that nobody wants to go. Amen. Nobody wanted to go to this area. He said the land of, of Nephtali and the land of Zubilin. Praise God. Those areas were around Gentiles and nobody wanted to go in that place. But God says nobody wants to come see about you. Nobody wants to call you. Nobody has encouraging words for you. Nobody really don't know how depressed you've been. You've been what? Lifting everybody up. But don't nobody know you're about to throw in the towel. God is saying, I have light for you. I got a revelation for you. Jesus is coming to your house. My God, the Bible says it like this. That help is on the way. Hey, Amen. If you believe that, type that in the box. My help is on the way. Light is coming to where I am. The people that walked, that means they conducted their business in darkness. They lived their life in darkness. Now that word darkness, some of you heard me uh, teach this before. It, in the Greek, it means skotos, which means it's a metaphor. Ignorance, respecting divine things. So when you see darkness, it's really talking about us not having enough knowledge concerning divine things and how that connects us to human responsibility, which means that walking in darkness is what the enemy wants you to do because you are void of the understanding or you are void of the knowledge concerning what kind of things? Divine things. Praise God. Well, Colossians said it like this, set your affections on things that are what? Above. Don't get wrapped up in this superficial system of man and pray God. Don't get wrapped up in the cars and the clothes and your appearance and the branding and the marketing of your life. Don't get confused right now because the greater thing is that which Mary said. She wanted to hear the word of God. Choose something divine. But if I can blind them to divine things, they will not fulfill responsibility. So we're in a season where the devil wants me to live in ignorance. He doesn't want me to get a revelation of divine things. Can somebody say hallelujah? Praise God. But God about to open your eyes and let you see the divinity of Christ. Oh, glory to God. How can a man overturn a table in irritation and then walk on water? Huh? You're about to switch to the lower Christology, to the higher one. My God, you're about to come out your perpetual frustration. Always upset, always irritated. There's darkness somewhere. There is a demon that is ruling in that darkness. He rules in your ignorance of your divine nature. He don't want you to get to the place where things don't bother you. People don't bother you. What you have and what you don't have don't reflect how you truly feel about yourself. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angel nor principality shall be able to separate me from the love of God. If God saying death will not stop me from loving you, what are you paying attention to? Can somebody say amen? I need somebody, amen, that hands up free, type in the box. Darkness is over. Darkness is over. It's time for you to step out of the realm of not knowing divine things. Look past the superficial. Amen. And realize that you and I are in a warfare. And the warfare, beloved, it is not with flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that, praise God, when we got baptized with the Holy Ghost, Praise God. We're not mere mortals anymore. 
Hallelujah. We walk on the earth, praise God, as kings and priests. We have been elevated and transferred and translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into another system that will never, ever be defeated. Praise the Lord. I need you to praise God where you are. I know I feel strength coming to you where you are. I know some of you were depressed, about to give up, about to throw in the towel, but you tuned in to hear this skinny preacher say that God has called you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Glory to God. And your darkness is over. You're going to step into revelation knowledge concerning divine things. Because you have a responsibility. Amen. I know you're saying, well, I'm the least of the family. You sound like Gideon, right? I am the least of my father's house and we got the smallest tribe. Praise the Lord. But God says, hallelujah. I've given you a mantle. I've given you divine responsibility. Praise God. And Gideon, who was small in stature in the spirit, low self-esteem, no confidence. God turned him from a coward into a conqueror. And God is doing the same thing for you. Oh, backslidden people, come back to me. You're a king. My God. Woo. Glory to God. Come on back. Come on back, missionary. Come on back in that prayer closet. Come on, get back, get back. Come on, backslider, get back. Turn yourself back in. Because God said, this is the perfect time to get back where you should be. Because favor is about to hit the body of Christ. Favor is about to hit the body of Christ. I need you to tag somebody. Invite somebody to hear what I'm saying. Come on, y'all. Call out their names right now. Put names in the box right now. Tell them, baby, you need to hear what Pastor Cunningham is saying. That favor is around the corner. The pandemic is nothing but an introduction to the power of God. To the revolution of God. To the revival of God. To the restoration of God. The pandemic is nothing but a prelude for the favor that's about to hit the body of Christ. Glory to God. If you believe that, come on. Put some names in that box. Invite somebody. They need to hear this. Amen. Don't be self. It's good news. I got good news. Hallelujah. Although you're falling, God about to lift you up. I got good news for you today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the absence of light causes darkness to prevail. So the people that walked, walked in darkness. They walked in a level of ignorance where they could not fulfill responsibility. They did not know that God had chosen them. Now, that word walk means that you're conducting your business. Now, matriculate with me over the, uh, praise God, into the New Testament, the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter. Praise God. Matthew 4 and 13. I'm setting you up. We're going to get to Daniel. I know some of y'all. Amen. We're going to get there. I got to build my case. Amen. Why? Because you don't think God can use you. You don't think God can overlook, praise God. You don't think, amen, that you're qualified. Amen. But if God chose you, beloved, come on here. If you are chosen by God, glory to God, there is nothing that anybody can say about it. And there is no demon that can stop it. You just need to be reminded of the rock that you were hewn out of. Praise God. You got to be reminded of your authority in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And God has said, I put everybody in this, on the same level. Everybody got to seek me from their homes. There is no great eyes. There's no big U's. Come on, y'all. Everybody got to get on their knees. Amen. Everybody got to open the book now. God is showing you I'm not done with you yet. Amen. I'm not finished with you. Come on back. Amen. Come on, type some names in that box of people that you know need to be encouraged. Amen. Whether they're saved or not saved, God wants them. God says, my will is that nobody perish, but all men come to repentance. Amen. And repentance is a good thing, for it is the goodness of God that will lead us and cause us to repent. Amen. Godly sorrow works my repentance. And repentance means I'm going to burn up the house so my low self-esteem won't live there. I'm going to burn up my house so fornication can't live there. I'm going to burn up my house so adultery can't live there. I'm going to burn up my house never to return to live in that condition again. What did Jesus say? Go and what? Sin no more. Praise the Lord. Type your names in that box. Tell them, my God, it's not over. It's not over. Jesus said it's not over. Praise God. I shut you down to get your attention. And guess what? It is not over. I have chosen you to come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. 
So now let's read it in the New Testament. Amen. In the New Testament. That's right. Put names in there. In the New Testament. Tell them, come on in here. I got good news. That though your sins be red as scarlet. My God. I know somebody that can get the stain out. Glory to God. <laughs> I know somebody that can get the stain of your life out. I know some of y'all saying, my life should not be like this. I have worked hard and I don't have fruit to show for it. What is going on? I'm going around in circles. But God want me to tell you today, you have still come to the kingdom for such a time as this. All of that is going to stop when you just give me a yes from your soul. I will take over your life and I'm going to change the time. And the seasons that you are living in. Amen. Type some names in that box. Tell them, come on. Amen. Come on back. Jesus is going to do something for you. Amen. So let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Amen. It says, and leaving Nazareth. Underline that. 13. 4 and 13. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulon and Nephthalim. Once again, and leaving Nazareth, God, praise God, chose Jesus to come down 42 generations to save people that didn't meet standards. Man, I'm about to shout up in here right now. You're beating yourself over your head because of what you have not accomplished. And the only reason why you have not accomplished because you have not looked to the hills from whence cometh the assistance that you need to get the job done. But that's why God arrested you and said, go to New Vision of Victory Facebook page, their live service. I'm going to put the words in apostles' mouth to get your restoration started. But I need your cooperation. I need you to participate in what the man of God is saying. And the man of God is prophesying to you that the best days are ahead of you. They are not behind you. Don't be like Lot's wife and look back because I'm about to deliver you from all kind of perversion. You're coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Bora, but just don't go back. I need you to praise God for your new life. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you for that new life. Thank you for the newness of life. You can't put what? New wines in old skins. So I am putting you in a place where I got to reform you. I got to change the way you think. I got to change your perspective. I got to change your paradigm. My God, I got to change the way you see you. I got to change how you feel about you. I got to change your esteem, your self-construct, your self-concept. When you look in the mirror, I don't want you to feel bashful and ashamed. I don't want you to get a distorted figure, but that's what the devil do. He would twist the very image. And that's what the word iniquity means. Iniquity means twisted or bent over or crooked. And you don't have a right perspective of self because of the iniquity that's in you. But God says, I'm coming to make the crooked places straight. You're going to see yourself just like God wants you to be seen. Kingly. Glory to God. I'm getting ahead of myself. Royal. My God. Sarah, a prince of mothers. My God. She's going to birth out kings. How can she birth out kings and she don't think she's a queen? So God said, I got to shut you down to build you back up. My God. You got that? Put those names in that box. Come on. Put those names in there. Come on. Why? Because the mandate ain't changed. Go ye into all the world. What? We are all the world now. Social media is not confined to 10909. Huh? Now the gospel is being preached all over the world in its simplistic form. What is it? Jesus saves. Huh? Jesus is Savior. Lord of all. My God, not Buddha. Not Muhammad, y'all ain't saying that. Not Socrates, Aristotle, not a higher level of thinking or enlightenment. Praise God. But God said it pleased God with the foolishness of preaching to save them that should be saved. My God, you're chosen. You're chosen. Put your name in the box and say, I'm chosen. My God, write your name. Kevin is chosen. Felicia is chosen. Darius is chosen. Kara is chosen. Larry is chosen. Come on, y'all. The Smith family is chosen. Daniel and Daniel, you're chosen. Put your name and say, I am chosen. You are chosen by God strategically. Now, let me get to it. I'm getting ahead of myself. He was rejected in Nazareth. Jesus was. 
He was rejected at Nazareth. And guess what? He left. Now, don't stay in places that don't want you. Can I get that? Amen. Do not stay in an area where you know, hallelujah, that you are not wanted. He didn't wrestle with Nazareth. They missed their blessing. Praise God. Their missed opportunity is your opportunity for favor. Huh? He left Nazareth because of the rejection, but he went to another place. <laughs> this is where you got to put down whatever's in your hand and start praising God. Why? Because what they miss, you about to get the sloppy seconds. But the sloppy seconds not sloppy because the Savior bringing it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My God, light is about to come. Jesus is about to come to the darkest place of your life. And when light gets there, my God, your time and your season changes. That's what Daniel said. When the secret was revealed, darkness no longer had authority. And one of the first words that came out of his mouth was, he changes times. So what does the secret does when it, uh, praise God, is revealed to you? It's going to change your time. <laughs> it's going to change the season that's in your life. If it was a season of frustration or a time of agony, it's going to change when the secret is revealed. But the secret cannot be revealed without light. Unlock the secret, Holy Ghost. My God. Unlock it. Show me where I went off. Show me why I went wrong. Get into the iniquity that's in me by nature. Huh? Get into my, my sinful nature. My nature hates God. And I'm crooked. Because of sin. See, this is why we got to think, y'all. Praise God. I'm, I'm reading a book. I know y'all saying he always doing that. I'm reading a book that says the 12 dilemmas. The 12 theological dilemmas. A dilemma is this, uh, according to theology, is when you have a lot of options, but you can only choose one. Huh? You have a lot of options, but you can only choose one. That's a theological dilemma. Amen. Praise God. So you got this option. You got that option. An uh, option is a train of thought. You can think about this. What do you think about Christ? His lower Christology or his higher Christology. Do you believe he was human or do you believe he was God? Amen. And you got to choose an option. It brings a dilemma. When you got all of these options, it brings a dilemma. Now we are in a dilemma because we have been exposed to too many types of gospels. Hey, God is saying, I am going to remove this dilemma to show you that my word cannot be debated. It can only be believed. Huh? Y'all ain't saying that. If you believe this is going to happen, have faith in God. So the dilemma, I'm reading the book. It says dilemma option this, option A and option B. And I'm going through, I said, this is good reading, good reading, good reading. It shows me that I got to make up my mind about what I believe. I got to choose one option and stand on it. And then I got to have scripture to back up why I chose this route. I got to have a reason why I choose Jesus. Come on, somebody. I got to have a reason why I choose to go this route. So now, uh, as I'm reading the book, it says that everybody should go through this book because it causes you to reflect. And when you reflect, your convictions become refined. Maybe we are not convicted of enough in what we believe. Just maybe. And the devil comes in that little dark area and rules. We got everything else all right over here. But it's one little area that we got to clean up. Maybe my convictions are not refined concerning that theological dilemma. This is why you must be around Holy Ghost, my God, filled and led preachers to pick up your dilemma. Glory. Jesus always discerned the dilemma. He discerned when they wasn't believing him. 
He discerned when they didn't believe that he had the power to forgive sins. He discerned when the woman came to the well, but she had an issue in marriage and with men. My God, the dilemma makes you have different options. And we're not choosing to go the route, the straight and the narrow way concerning the word of God. There is a way, praise God, and a highway, praise God. But then there's a way called holiness. What option are you choosing? Maybe that's the dilemma. But God says, this is why you got to get around preachers. Hey man, you got to tune in to anointed preachers that are led of the spirit. My God, they can prophesy while they preach and teach. Why? To get into that dilemma. My God, but God says you don't have any more options. Praise God. You got a lot of choice, choices, but you don't have a lot of options. I am the way out. I am the truth and I am the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to get delivered. There's only one way to get healed, sanctified, my God, delivered. There's only one way to be the righteousness of God and that is coming through Jesus. My God, there's only one way to get your stuff back. Turn around and come back to Jesus. <laughs> Amen, the people of God that believes it, I need you to shout amen right there. Amen. So Jesus left Nazareth. He came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zebulon and Nephthalim. Why? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet. Verse 15, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea, listen, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. God strategically put him in a place where those who have been rejected can see him. Jesus is coming to areas where other people are afraid to go. <laughs> He's coming to get you because nobody else wants to deal with you. I need you to praise God on that, my God. He came through the storm. Hallelujah. Walked on the water. Got back in the boat. Upbraided his apostles. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Stepped off on an island called Gadara. To get one man that nobody wanted to fool with. And when Jesus put his Galilean feet on the coast of Gadara, that man that was tormenting everybody stopped what he was doing, came subject to the authority, and held a conversation with Jesus. I know who you are. You're here before your time. That man was what? Rejected among people. Nobody wants to deal with the instability and the insanity. But Jesus can handle it. Hey, do I, am I talking to somebody? Jesus can handle your mood swings. Jesus can handle your depression, your up and down. My God, the, the doctors call it bipolar, but Jesus calls it a case, a dilemma. Well, your personality, my God, you're going to bring it all subject. One day you're happy, the next day you're sad. My God, when somebody compliments you, you feel like superwoman. But then when somebody criticizes you, you feel like you don't know who you are. My God, no more mood swings. No more bipolar. My God, no more, praise God, swings in your mood. My God, manic depression. All of these things come from Satan. But God sent his only begotten son. My God, for whoever believes in him, they shall be saved and I'm telling you right now your light is come your light is come your light has come nobody wanted to go to these places but God sent Jesus he's sending Jesus right now to your place verse 16 says this the people which sat now remember the word that you underline in Isaiah said the people that walked amen the people that walked now they're sitting in darkness. So to let you know, if you don't change, it gets worse. Isaiah 9 said that they walked in darkness. They still had some level of authority. But now, Matthew, same scripture says that the people sat in darkness. That means sin gets progressively worse. My God, your situation has gotten worse. Come on, say amen. Your situation started off manageable, but now it's not manageable. You've been putting it off. You've been putting it off. Yeah, I'm going to go to church. Yeah, I'm going to go to church. Praise God. Yeah, they got an Easter program. Yeah, I'm coming on Mother's Day. You've been putting it off. Come on, y'all. Type some names in the box of, of people that you know have put it off. But God say, you can't put it off no more. Why? Because everybody on Facebook, everybody on Zoom, come on. You get notifications all over your phone now. Why? Because God says, I shut everything down to get you back. 
Come on, y'all. I'm going after the backsliders. I'm going after the sinners. For the Son of Man did not come into the earth, my God, to get the righteous saved. He came to save those who knew they had problems. Those who knew they had no control. I can't control myself. I'm addicted to X, Y, and Z. But Jesus said, I come to break the yoke and the bands of wickedness. Come on, type names in the box. Invite them and tell them, this is your day. This is the day of repentance. A day where I take your weeping and your mourning and I turn it into joy. My God, the struggle in your mind is over right now. Why? Because light is come. Light is come. If you're getting something out of this, I need you to praise God right there in the box. Go praise God. Type in hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise him right now. Nobody knows your mind had broken down. But Jesus said, I'm going to build your mind back up. Huh? Glory to God. All right, I got advice that you got to teach. You can't preach. Amen. I need Jesus to help me out. Amen. Because I feel like preaching. Amen. And let you know that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Hallelujah. And every tongue that spoke a curse over you, you will never be nothing. You will never amount to anything. You're going to be just like your no good daddy. You're going to be just like your loose mama. You this and you. It's a word curse. But God said, I'm coming to reverse the curse. I'm coming to break it. My God, you can't curse what God has already blessed. Hallelujah. Light is coming. Light has come. I need you to type names in that box and praise the Lord, y'all. The people which sat in darkness sat. So if you, don't, if you don't get rid of your situation, it gets worse. Your eyes can adjust to darkness. Amen. If your eyes are open and they turn off the light, you can feel your eyes dilate to get used to the darkness. So as soon as you know that there is a problem, get out. <laughs> as soon as you feel sadness come, break out in the praise. Tell a joke. Come on here. Go to the word, but don't let sadness prevail. Don't let sadness and depression ride and have dominion over you. My God. So now they went from walking to sitting. But guess what? Same solution. A great light has come. Not just a light, but a what, y'all? Great light. Can somebody say amen? Oh, my God. I'm looking at my time. Praise God. A great light has come. Somebody praise God because not only is the light coming, but God says a great light is coming. Woo! Woo! Which means this. Now here goes the revelation. It says the people which sat in darkness in great saw great a, a great light. Excuse me. The people which sat in darkness saw great light unto them which sat in the region or the shadow of death. Light is sprung up. Here is the revelation in verse 16. Here's the secret that God is unlocking. One of them that God is unlocking. In the Bible, in Genesis 1, the Bible said that God made a greater light to shine and to rule by the day and a lesser light to what? Rule by the night. So verse 16, you see Jesus and the church. Amen. Jesus comes first. The people that sat in darkness, Jesus came first. He is the great light. He came first. And to them... That was sitting in places of debauchery, sitting in places of depression, sitting in places of being spiritually handicapped, not the great light, a light, which means that Jesus now has transferred his responsibility onto us. Jesus is gone. He was shining in the, the time where he ruled by day. But when he left, night came. Glory to God. Now, we are the light of the world. Now, we got to pick up where Jesus left off. We got to shine. See, I know some of y'all about to leave now. Amen. Why? Because you want Jesus. Jesus said, I've done my work. Now, the works that I do, you are also going to do. But greater works. Why? Because I'm not going to be around. As long as I'm here, they can connect me with you. And they can connect you with me. I see why you're doing it. Jesus here. I see why you're doing it. Jesus is right there. But when Jesus gone, how are you doing these things? No man can do these things. Jesus did them. But how can you? You used to be a robber, a thief. You used to fornicate, commit adultery. You used to lie. Now, what in the world done happened to you? You can say, I went to a church meeting one night. 
<laughs> and my heart wasn't right. Y'all ain't saying that. Come on, y'all. Praise God right there. Because God say, I don't use things that got it all together. Because I don't get no glory. I don't get no glory. Hallelujah. But God said, I'm getting glory out of this. I'm going to get glory out of your dysfunctional life. Yep. I know how you were treated. Praise God, when you were four, five, and six years old, I know you've been shuffled around in the foster care system. You went from this house. You went from that house. You've been neglected, treated mean. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Kicked out, left on the side of the curb, and your life seemed like it has never got back together. But I come to unlock a secret for you. The light has come. Your light has come. Now, I had no idea I was going to go this route. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise God. But I thank God for Holy Ghost preachers now. I praise God for you. My God, I need you to type a name in that box of somebody you've been praying for. And I want you to encourage them right now. Send them a love letter and tell them that Jesus has sent light and God has revealed the darkness that Jesus won't have back. Hell is on notice. My God, give up those souls that you've been tormenting. Hell is on notice. My God, you got to give her back. Glory to God. You got to give him back. My God, he's supposed to be in a pulpit. He ain't supposed to be in no nightclub. My God, spinning records as a DJ. He's supposed to be preaching the word of God. My God, but he got so hurt and so wounded and so deceived till he left the pulpit. Now he's a DJ. My God, in a nightclub. But God said, I'm a spring light. In that nightclub, a spring light. When you try to play another song, my God, when you try to do another party, when you try to go live on Facebook, spinning those records, God go interrupt you and say, Preacher, why are you sitting up under this juniper tree? Come on here. Get back where you belong. Get back where you belong. I need y'all to share this with people. Come on. Some of y'all have taken the easy route out. That's what iniquity does. I'm going to teach you on iniquity throughout the week. Iniquity means that your nature, your nature is hateful with God. By nature, we are the children of wrath. By nature, we're the children of wrath. It takes being born again to my, for my nature to be changed. You can go to college. I did. You can get a theological degree. Huh? You could be what? Deep in the word. But is your nature changed? Because if your nature is not changed, that crookedness go come out. That means you're going to find a way around the requirement. Huh? Come on here, y'all. I'm going to teach this this week. You're going to find a way around what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. We go around forgiveness. I'll do it another way. Y'all ain't saying that. We go around. We don't want to confront the thing, my God, that'll kill the flesh. My God, I feel prayer coming in my belly. But God going to give you, my God, the courage and the boldness to go to the place where the enemy has fortified that sin. Huh? They say God got a way that you what? Can't go over? God got a way that you can't go around? My God. You trying to go up? God over you. It's too big. It's too high. You can't go around what God wants you to have. That's what iniquity does. Iniquity tries to find another way around because it's crooked. Huh? I know what you're saying. I heard what you're saying. I understand everything. I just don't like the way. That's iniquity. He said you were perfect till what? Another way got into your heart. You didn't like the law that I, 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 I prescribed for you. So you're trying to fulfill your call another way. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is what he said, workers of iniquity, depart from me, and what? Never knew you trying to get around the requirement. Glory to God. That's why it's a mystery of iniquity. Tight names in the box of people, my God, that you know, my God, should be preaching, should be what? Laboring in the kingdom. Type in that name, because we're going to get the backsliders. I know we got to do it virtual, but I got to tell the backslider, you've been called and chosen to come to God's kingdom. For such a time as this, a time of gross deception. But in you is the element of truth. You ain't never been phony. Come on, y'all. I know some people that ain't saved that's more truthful and honestly people that say they say. Y'all say amen. But they got to get born again. Huh? And God is choosing people that are in places that are rejected. 
So did you get the revelation for, uh, verse 16? It says this, the people which sat in, in, in what? Darkness saw great light. They saw Jesus. And to them which sat in the region and in the shadow of death. Now look, if you see the progression, Jesus only went to people sitting in darkness. We got to go to people that's sitting in the region and in the shadow of death, which means our assignment is more harder. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God called you to go into the shadow of death and tell them if it's a shadow, then the sun must be around somewhere. Come on, y'all. My God. If it's a shadow, y'all getting that? A shadow can only be there if a light is there. Huh? The church is about to go into areas of death and command death. My God, lose your hope and life going to come. Talk to me. You've been chosen. You've been chosen. Put that in the box. I've been chosen. Now, the birth of Jesus was strategic. He put him in a place. Now, let's see how this connects. Now, praise God. My time. I'm going to say, praise God. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Uh, oh, my time. I said, my, my, my time, ladies and gentlemen. Keep preaching. I'm going to let you go with this. Daniel. Get that first chapter of Daniel. Now, let me show you how this connects to secret things. By the way, let me show you this. Praise God. You got it? That's right. I see those, I see those names. Keep those names coming. Keep those names coming, y'all. Keep those names coming. That's it. Let them know you've been chosen. I see it. Let them know you've been chosen. Now, I need somebody to type in the box secret. The word secret. Secret. This is the powerful definition right here. Secret. 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 I need, I need you to share this. I need you to share this. I want more viewers. More people should be listening to this good word. My God. This is a word of forgiveness. This is a word where God says, I don't remember what you're talking about. Huh? I don't remember what you're talking about. Let the church. I've been chosen. That's right. Now, the word secret means raz, R-A-Z. That's how you pronounce it in Hebrew. And the word is attenuate. Now, the way you spell attenuate is A-T-T-E-N-U-A-T-E. -E. Attenuate. So secret in the Hebrew means attenuate. So when I looked up the word attenuate, it is a verb. So when you're in a, in a secret place or when there is secret, that means there is action going on. All right. A secret is something of action. In other words, I got to keep it a secret. It's just not one thing. Every day, I got to blind you in areas. When you wake up, I got to blind you. I got to blind you. Keep you in darkness. Keep you in secret. Secret. I got to work the secret. I got to make sure I got to manage the secret. I got to steward the secret. I got to make sure I don't tell the wrong person the secret. So secret is an action that's going on. It's a spiritual act that's going on. A spiritual act that's going on. It's attenuate, which means to reduce the force of something. To give it a gradual loss of intensity. So, when the devil puts us in darkness, come on y'all, we lose our force. And we gradually lose our intensity. Come on. Amen. Some of you would agree with me that the body of Christ has lost its sensitivity and its force dealing with the spiritual realm. We've been blessed financially. We've been blessed materially. We have climbed the mountain, amen, and overcame poverty. But in doing so, have our soul become lean? Have we forgot that we are spirit creatures and spirit beings? Have we forgot that we still must attend to the spiritual realm? Sometimes you can get so enamored with suits and ties and money and wealth, praise God, and everything has its proper place, but you forget about the supernatural. We have lost force, glory to God, in the supernatural. We have gradually lost our intensity for spiritual things, my God. But God says, this is the time where I reveal the secret. So if the devil keeps you in the dark, you're going to lose your intensity. Day by day, you, you, you're going to go from walking in darkness to eventually getting used to your situation. You lose your intensity because there's a secret. You don't know something. 
But when the secret is revealed, God shifts the power of authority to you. Now you know. Now the devil loses force. Now the enemy loses his intensity because God has revealed the secret. So as long as Daniel was in darkness and the secret was not revealed, Daniel's life was in jeopardy and all of his people's lives were in jeopardy because the secret was not revealed. They didn't have force. They didn't have intensity because they didn't know. This is why it's important for you to have a relationship with God. Amen. Because when you start losing your intensity, there is a demonic spirit of darkness keeping you blinded from your responsibility to walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The battle is 24-7, 365. <laughs> Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Though we live in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Can somebody say amen? I need you to type in the box, the battle is 24-7. The battle, glory to God, for your mind is 24-7. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a battle for your children. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare, but the devil has blinded you, giving you blind spots, so you're losing your force. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violent, but the violent cannot take it unless they have, what y'all, force. If there is no force, there is a secret somewhere. But as soon as the secret is revealed, the power shifts back to the saints. And this is why I opened up saying, this is a seismic change. Because power about to come not to the United States government. How? But God going to set it up where the power falls in the lap of the church. People are going to run to the hills because they need help. My God. So money, my God, now has purpose. Hallelujah. I see churches setting up programs. I see churches setting up hospitals. I see churches reviving old banks that closed down because the government will collapse. But the church and the government shall be upon our shoulder. Woo! Get ready to be used by God. Get ready to be used by God. Every entrepreneur, dig in. Reconstruct your business right now. Every entrepreneur, under the sound of my voice, you're about to give up on the next best thing. God about to give you a secret concept. He about to reveal the secret why your business has not taken off. You have lost force. You have lost intensity. You have lost income. You have lost support because there's a demonic secret around. But God about to reveal it. And when God reveals the enemy and when the thief be found, the thief got to restore what y'all typing in the box in capital letters. Sevenfold about to come back to you. Sevenfold. Glory to God. You getting something out of this? I'm about to break it down. I'm about to stop. I've been on too long. Praise God. So secret means attenuate, which is to reduce the force of something, to gradually lose your intensity. Church, amen. God about to shift the force back to you. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence taken by what? Force. How forcible, this is Job 4 and 23, Job 4 and 23, how forcible are right sayings. When you speak right, it forces a change. So we've been living in a secret. Daniel, my God, I don't like to call him, I'm going to get that. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah was called to the kingdom. Come on, y'all. Why? A time of darkness. We're going to get into it. Praise God. I need you to follow me all this week in Facebook. I'm going to finish this teaching. Amen. But you have been called just like Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, Daniel, all four of these, these four Hebrew boys was called to go into a system, a Babylonian system of darkness. And there were secrets everywhere. But God chose them just like he's chosen you. To reveal this secret to. This is a great time for you to be here. This is a time for you not to bring up where you failed God. Praise God. Or where you think God failed you. My God. Sometimes you can be upset with God because he took you a certain route. Hallelujah. Right now. But we pray that bitterness don't set in your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, uproot bitterness right now. 
Take it out that heart. Take it out that woman of God. She started off on fire with God. She started off teaching and preaching the gospel. She was visiting the sick. She was going to hospitals. My God, but something happened in the church that caused her not to believe in you anymore. God, take that bitterness out of her heart. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, look on deacons that are, are losing their force and their intensity. Look on the people of God, Lord. Call them right now out of what they're in. Save them. In the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory for it right now. Come on, begin to praise God. Begin to magnify God right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, give God 30 seconds of praise. Come on here. Give him praise for his goodness. Give him praise because he's wonderful. Hallelujah. We love you. We glorify you. We need you like never before. You are majesty. You are majesty to us. You are the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You are majesty. You are majesty. You're sovereign. There's nobody like you. And the people of God praise you for being just who you are in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Type names in that box of people that you know need help. People that you know need to be delivered. People that you know, the devil got darkness, dark clouds over their life, and the secret has not been revealed, so they're losing force. They're losing strength. They're losing the battle because they don't know how to fight. But thank God they got a friend in you because a great light came, but the great light is gone. Now the light must shine in the shadow of darkness. You are that light. Encourage your friend right now. Reach out to your friend right now. Tell them, I know how you feel. I've been there. Glory to God. But I'm coming to tell you, if Jesus can deliver me, he can deliver anybody. This is the time of a great revival. This is the time we ought to go fishing. Everybody want answers and you got the answer. You got the answer. God did this so that you can witness. Witness. Tell them, my God, I'm not afraid. Why are you not afraid? Because Jesus has given me great peace and you can have the same peace. Yes, I lost my job like you, but look, I am not reacting like you. Why not? My anchor, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. I got an anchor of hope, glory to God, that will not let me get swept away. I know God will work this thing out. My God, and we know that all things work together for the good. Encourage him, encourage him, why? Because you are the light. I encourage you, go back and read Matthew, the fourth chapter, that 15, 16 verse. A great light came, but it's gone now. You're the light. Type the name in the box. Come on. Type the name in the box. That's right. Type the name in the box. Type your cousin's name in the box. Type your relative name in the box. Glory to God. And what? Shine that light on them. You are the light of the world. You're a city that is sitting on the hill and you cannot be hid. COVID-19 won't this, what, won't uh, hide you? What man lighteth a light and then put it under a bushel? What man will light a candle and then put it under a bushel? Come on, let your light so shine that they may see your good works so they can glorify your Father which is in heaven. And this is where we're going. Perfect time. And now we're going to show you how Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah was chosen by God to go into a Babylonian dark demonic system and change it. And this is what God is calling you to. You've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Secrets are being revealed right now. Now you see the secrets of your life. Now you know, oh, when I did that, that's when everything went wrong. Secrets. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for revealing and talking right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, for those who do not know the Lord. Amen. Pay attention for those who do not know the Lord. If you died today, where would you be? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? If you died right now, would you ever be in the presence of the Lord forevermore? Or will you be what? Chained and doomed and damned to go to a Satan's hell. Be honest. Because when you die, it's appointed unto man once to die. And then after you die, you go immediately into judgment. Huh? Where the goats will be on the left and the sheep will be on the right. The goats will go into everlasting damnation. But the sheep into everlasting joy with the father. Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? 
Do you walk by faith in God or do you walk by faith in yourself? Where are you? Be honest. Where are you in your life? Wherever you are, Jesus can save you. If that's you, repeat these words after me out of the sincerity of your heart. Because with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. If your heart not right, you can't live right. With your heart, you believe. Not with your mind. With your heart, with your inner man, you must believe. Repeat these words after me. Father, I am a sinner. I was born in sin. I was conceived in iniquity. But today, I heard your voice. It was loud and it was clear that I am in need of salvation. And your son Jesus is the only one that can save me. So Lord, here I am. I am wounded. I am battered. And I am tired. Save me. Deliver me from myself. Deliver me from my past. Deliver me from my sins. I confess them to you. Deliver me from all of my flesh. Save me. Heal me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you believe that, welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the household of faith. Now, follow us on Facebook, please. Follow my Facebook page. Follow my wife's Facebook page. Follow us via satellite. We are going to be teaching and teaching and teaching from the word of God. Amen. Next time, we're going to pick up in the book of Daniel, the first chapter. Praise God, I need you to follow me. I will be on Facebook every day if the Lord say the same at 1230 to get the revelation out about Daniel. The secret has been unlocked. Praise God. The secret has been unlocked and the mystery has been solved. Follow us on Facebook, please, for the continuance of this message. Don't stop right here, but find out how did Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah get great favor in Babylon, a system built on idolatry and the occult and black magic. You could be in the darkest place and God still give you favor. Why? Because you have been chosen by the Lord. And when you get secrets, that's when your promotion comes. In Jesus' name, enjoy the rest of your day. Continue, continue to pray for us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Blessings and favor, beloved. This is Pastor Deirdre Cunningham. Wasn't that word powerful? We pray that you have been edified, encouraged, and motivated to pursue God for your next in your life. Right now, you can take the opportunity to sow into that word by texting N-V-O-V-I-M to 77977. Or you can go to our website, newvisionofvictory.org forward slash sow a seed. Until next time, feel free to join us on Wednesday night at 730 for our powerful Bible class. Until then, see you next time, beloved. Bye-bye.